Hey guys, this could be a life changing moment for you. If you like to knit, if you like to make knitted hats, knitted scarves, things with squishy, soft worsted weight yarn, and you want to knit them fast, you might like what I have to show you today. This is the Centro 48 needle knitting machine. And today I want to talk about what it is, how it works, what it can and cannot do, and why I think it's life changing. Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and the School of Sweet Georgia. And I come here every Friday to talk about being a multi-craftual maker. We talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. Today, we are gonna talk about this Centro knitting machine. You might've seen this around the internet. It's been quite popular. <laughs> so I asked on Instagram what questions you have about this machine, and I'm gonna try to answer them all in this video. So first off, what is this thing? This is a knitting machine. This is a fully plastic knitting machine that is available with either 22, 32, 40, or 48 stitches. The one that I have here is 48 stitches around. I got this one because I wanted to be able to knit adult sized hats. If you want to knit smaller hats, like hats for kids, then maybe the 40 needle one would be more appropriate. And the 32 needle machine is adorable, I have to say, and it's designed to look like a mushroom house. So what can it do? <laughs> so what can this machine do? This machine can knit stockinette in the round to make a tube um, using this setting here. There's a T setting, the tube setting. It can also be set up to knit stockinette. So flat back and forth panels of stockinette with this P setting. So with the 48 needle machine, I see a ton of hats being made. So the one hat pattern, the super simple hat pattern that's going around is basically one where you crank a tube and and that tube can be anywhere from about 100 rounds to 140 rounds, depending on how slouchy you like your hat and if you want extra length for a brim. So in this case, what I did was I used our Superwash worsted yarn. This happens to be the Oxblood colorway. Did you know that this year's color of the year is called Viva Magenta? And it's basically this color. It's great. I love it. <laughs> so for this particular hat that I made, I cranked 125 rounds uh, to make this giant tube. And then basically all you do is you take the live stitches on the machine and you pick them up with a yarn needle and then you cinch up that end. And then you take uh, the cast on edge and then you also cinch up that end and then you tuck it inside the hat. So then you take the yarn tail from the cast on edge and you just kind of weave it through the middle of your hat and then you tie the two together and then you basically have a hat, <laughs> a reversible hat. So the outside is stockinette, the inside of stockinette. You could do a lot of things with this pattern. You could knit it in two different colors. So maybe you knit half of the hat in one color and the other half in another color. And then when you fold up the brim, you're gonna get a colored brim. You could also make it reversible. You just kind of turn it inside out and then you have a different color to wear. So personally, I like a slouchy hat with no brim. And so that's why I made this particular one. This one fits really, really nice. And it has like that little bit of slouchy sort of feel to it. Um, if you made it a little bit longer, then it would definitely be much more slouchy. If you made it longer and you wanted to fold up the brim, you could do that. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a pom-pom or you can add one like the ones that you can get at the Yarn Bowler. This is a beautiful faux fur one that I got from Yarn Bowler at Knit City last year, and I've just been waiting to use it for a hat. So that went onto this particular hat. So this hat here, this one was cranked out of our mohair and silk DK. This one, I also cranked 125 rounds, but it turned out significantly longer. Well, not significantly, but a little bit longer than the superwash worsted one. And so this is where you would have to adjust and see how long do you actually want your hat to be. So that's the first thing that you can make. Now, I just wanna pause here for one quick second and mention that this particular hat took me exactly 12 minutes to knit. I used a timer and at the pace that I was cranking around, it took about six seconds to knit one round. That is 10 rounds in one minute. 120 rounds makes it 12 minutes. I'm just saying, this is crazy, crazy fast. So if you like cranking, <laughs> so if you keep cranking multiple balls of yarn, you could easily join colors, keep knitting, keep, keep knitting yarn, keep making this big long tube, and you could eventually make yourself a scarf or a cowl or whatever it is. 
If you have the smaller size machines like the 32 or the 22, you could probably make little kids leg warmers or arm warmers or something like that. But this is basically a tube that came off of the machine as well using worsted weight yarn that are superwash worsted. And I knit this at a couple of different gauges, but you can see kind of what the fabric looks like. Now, this machine knits stockinette straight out of the box, but with a little bit of hand manipulation, you can also get your machine to do other things like knit lace or knit cables. And so to knit lace, you basically manually move one stitch over to the next needle. Then when you crank around, you are effectively making a decrease and a yarn over. To knit cables, you can just take the stitches off of the needles and then exchange places like you would making a cable. So someone else had also asked me if you can knit sleeves on the machine. And I think, yes, it's possible. If you perhaps um, wanted to use this size, this is basically the size of the tube that comes off of the machine. This is at a looser gauge and up here it's at a tighter gauge, but this is, you could use this as a sleeve for a sweater for sure. If you wanted to be able to make decreases at the side and maybe like find a way to make this part of the fabric smaller, what you could do is you could use the P setting on the machine and then knit a flat panel. So sort of back and forth, back and forth, knitting a, a flat panel and then making decreases at the sides of the panel like you would on a flatbed knitting machine. Um, so, but that would mean that your sleeve would need to be uh, not more than 48 stitches at the widest point. And so that entirely depends on your pattern, your yarn, your gauge, whatever it is you're making. So it is possible to knit sleeves. People have also been wondering if you can knit socks on this kind of knitting machine. And yes, <laughs> you can knit socks on this machine, not on this 48 stitch cylinder machine, because that is basically going to make a sock that's this giant. Uh, maybe you use this as a Christmas stocking. I don't know. But uh, if you want to knit socks on this style of machine, I have seen knitters use the smaller 22 needle size of Centro knitting machines or Addy knitting machines to make socks. Now, some of those socks that I've seen are just plain old tube socks with no heel. Other socks that I've seen been made are uh, socks with an afterthought heel, where basically you just omit making the heel and uh, but you make kind of like a a gash in your in your tube and then you would basically pick up stitches and either crochet a heel or you knit on a heel afterwards i have also seen a video where someone's made a short row heel like you would make on a traditional circular sock knitting machine however <laughs> uh, you need to know that even though you can make the shape of a sock with the machine the fabric itself is going to be quite a big gauge and so that means that the socks are going to be more like thick bed socks rather than the kind of super tight and firmly knit socks that we think of when I think of hand knit socks. Someone else asked if you could knit color work and yes, it's possible. You basically need to hold two different colors up here um, where the needles are being picked up, where the stitches are being made. And then you basically manually present the color that you want to the needles as you crank around. And so there is a video by Answer Lady Knits where you can check out how to knit Fair Isle on an Addy knitting machine. If you're interested in hand dyeing, you can definitely knit sock blanks for dyeing on this machine. In fact, the sock blanks that I dyed for my book, Dying to Spin a Knit, were cranked on an Addy knitting machine, which is basically the same thing as this. So those sock blanks end up being very long and skinny, but what I actually really like about that is that the fabric is loose, and that means that the dye can penetrate the yarn blank easier and you get a much smoother look to your hand dyed sock plank. So I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but this little machine can actually do quite a bit of knitting. So how much does it cost? So last year I acted on my longtime interest in knitting machines and I actually went down that whole machine knitting rabbit hole. And it started off with that Erlbacher Speedster circular sock knitting machine, which is a fully metal machine that's modeled after sock knitting machines from the late 1800s. Then very quickly, I fell in love with flatbed knitting machines. And so I have talked about the Silver Reed or Singer LK150, SK280, SK360, and SK155 at various times on this channel. But all of those machines are on the expensive side. I know that I got many of my knitting machines used, but even so, those costs can add up. This particular plastic knitting machine, however, costs less than $100 Canadian, which is approximately $75 US at this moment. 
the machines with fewer needles cost even less. Now, just as a comparison, the Addy plastic knitting machine with 46 needles costs about $300 US. A 3D printed circular sock knitting machine from Dean and Bean costs about $500 US. And a metal based circular sock knitting machine from Erlocker could cost a few thousand dollars, depending on what your setup is. So how do we set this up? This machine comes pretty much ready to go straight out of the box. It comes with four plastic legs, which you basically just need to screw in place with some teeny tiny screws and a skinny, skinny, tiny little screwdriver <laughs> that Centro supplies. And then there are four little suction cups that you push into the bottom of the plastic legs. And then finally, there's this kind of weird shaped plastic thing here. And this plastic thing is a tensioning device. And so you add this to the front of the machine and then you use it to tension your yarn. So there are larger holes and smaller holes. The larger the hole, the looser the tension. If you need a very tight tension on your yarn, like for maybe finer yarns, then you can thread your yarn through more than one hole of the tensioning device in order to add more tension to your yarn. One big question that people had was what kind of yarn does it take? So the knitting machine actually comes with four balls of acrylic yarn. And so they are all a little bit of a variety of weights. And I think it's meant to give knitters an idea of what the ideal weight of yarn is to run through the machine. So there are two here that feel like they're on the sort of heavy worsted weight side, maybe a little bit like Aran weight, but they're, they're quite squishy and they're very soft. Um, the other two yarns, these look like they're about DK weight or light DK weight knitting yarn. So somewhere between this range of DK to worsted weight. If you use yarn that is too thick, it will be hard or almost impossible to crank. And you might even hear the gear is kind of grinding. If you use yarn that's too thin, you're going to end up with a fabric that is too sleazy and not stable. So you can see I've knit a couple of swatches here. And so this part of the swatch, this dark part of the swatch, I knit with a single strand of fingering weight yarn. This is our Cash Lux Spark. I knit the Cash Lux Spark, which is a fingering weight yarn, and I used the tightest possible tension. And so I basically fed the yarn through all three tension settings to get the fabric as tight as possible. And still, you can see the fabric is like mesh, okay? So personally, I don't think that this fabric is super usable because the yarn is likely going to snag and um, you're gonna ruin your project. So it's not a very stable fabric the way that it is like this. And so this is what I'm saying about knitting socks on a machine like this. The stitches are so big that you're, you're not going to want a sock with fabric like this. So some knitters might want to hold together multiple strands of fingering weight together to get sort of a marled or melange effect. So you can see the, the part of the swatch down here, this is actually two strands of fingering weight held together. Actually, it's the same colors that I'm using in here. It was the leftover yarn from this particular cowl. And so there's one sort of lighter blue and one darker blue. Uh, but you can see in this swatch, they are not really twisting around each other to cause too much blending and mixing. So the lighter color seems to be floating on top and it's predominant. And then the darker color is sort of like behind the lighter color. So one of the things that you might need to do is if you really want a marled and mixed and blended look to your yarn, then you'll have to twist them together before they go into the knitting machine. And so there's a number of different ways that we can do that. And I'll probably talk about that in a different video. But the two strands of fingering weight, they do knit up really quite nicely. It's still a very nice and loose fabric. And so for this reason, I think that if you were a dyer, you could use this machine to make a double sock blank for hand dyeing. So you'd hold together two strands of undyed yarn, crank them together into a sock blank. So then when you finish dyeing, that double sock blank you could separate the two yarns and then you would have two identically dyed yarns. So how do we cast onto this machine? You can see that there is one needle that is painted white or is colored white and all of the rest of the needles are pink. And so this white needle basically marks the start of round. So this is where I sort of begin all of my casting on. If you just tuck your yarn under that white needle and then start cranking around, it looks like you're getting stitches, but really all of the stitches are going to come undone and fall apart from the bottom of your knitting. So you actually need to cast on properly. And the technique that Centro shows in their instruction video is basically casting onto every other needle for the first round, 
and then you can crank around. So basically what you do is you hold the yarn tail under that white needle and then you use your left hand to weave the yarn back and forth around the needle and then under the next needle, around the next needle, then under the next needle, then around the next needle, all the way around the cylinder. So basically you're putting yarn under every other needle. Then when you get back to this white needle, you can just slip the yarn into this yarn guide and then into the tension setting that you want. And then you can just start cranking away. So does this tension device actually work? And does it actually have an effect on the fabric that you produce? And so we've actually had this conversation before when I talked about the Erlbacher CSM as well. If you hand knit, there are two things that affect your stitch size. There's the size of the knitting needle, and then there's the drag that you put on the yarn by threading it through your fingers before it gets to the needles to make the stitch. So if you thread it around just a few fingers, you're going to get a certain amount of drag. If you thread it multiple times around multiple fingers, you're going to get even more drag. The more drag you put on your yarn, it's going to cause those stitches to be smaller and tighter. The fabric gauge is going to overall be tighter. And so in the case of this knitting machine, the size of the needles is already set by the size of this cylinder and the distance between the needles around the cylinder. So there's going to be a certain length of yarn that is needed to travel from one needle to the next needle. And so you can't make stitches that are smaller than that, that amount of yarn. Now, if you use the same yarn, but you change the amount of drag or the amount of tension on the yarn, then you can start to see how that affects your gauge. So in this case, I basically knit this example. This is using our worsted weight, the Superwash worsted, and I knit around for 20 rounds using the loose tension slot. And then I knit another 20 rounds using the medium tension slot. And then finally I did 20 rounds using the tight tension slot. And then the last section here, I knit with um, feeding the yarn through more than one slot in order to make it even tighter. Now the fabric on any knitting machine, whether it's this kind of machine or the sock knitting machine or the flatbed knitting machine is going to be distorted. It's being stretched and hung on the machine. So in order to get a proper reading of the gauge, you need to take the knitted fabric off of the machine and ideally wet block it. You wash the fabric and you roll out the excess water and then you lay it flat to dry. And then you can measure and see what the gauge actually is. So I know that I am a bit of a nerd about this stuff. So I am the kind of person who goes to knit a gauge swatch <laughs> at multiple machine tensions. And then I write notes about them. And so if you don't care to do that, it's totally fine. This knitted fabric is very forgiving. It's very stretchy. It's still going to make a hat that fits you. And so this is probably not going to matter to you. But if you want to know and understand how your knitted fabric changes and the variables that affect the feel of your yarn and the feel of your fabric, then you might want to try this too. So you can definitely use my notes as a starting point and I put them all into a PDF, which you can download at our website. And I put that on the show notes post for this episode. You can find a link in the description box below this video. So you can even visually see that there is a difference between the tightest tension that you can make on this machine and the loosest tension. The loosest tension is going to make a tube that is a little bit wider, a little bit like looser, more, more drapey, more slinky. And then this fabric up here, this is a little bit more firm. It feels, it feels great. Like both, both parts of the fabric feel great, but they are different. And so if you want a project as that's more like this, then you're going to want to use this tension. If you like a project that's more like this, then you use the looser tension. Now you can see here, I actually joined two colors. How do you join the second ball of yarn? So in some of the instructions that I've read about using the central knitting machine, they talk about knotting your yarn for the second ball and then knitting with a knot in your yarn. I don't knot my yarn at all. I do what I do with hand knitting. I overlap the new yarn with my old yarn and then I knit it together for maybe three or four stitches so that they are kind of, yeah, they're overlapped. And so then I just continue on with the second and drop the first yarn. And that's what I've been doing with the machine as well. I just add in the second yarn, allow those needles to knit together uh, for a few stitches and then I continue on, on with the new yarn and leave the old yarn. I don't knot my yarn. <laughs> So coming from the perspective of both a hand knitter and a machine knitter, I do have some thoughts on this machine. I do think that it could be life-changing in a few ways. The first and most obvious thing is that it is just 
fast. Like you think about it, if you can crank through one full skein of worsted weight yarn in about 15 minutes, think about how quickly you could knit through your entire stash. You can think about blending multiple strands of fingering weight to make hats for your family or for charity. And if you don't have a ton of time in your life for knitting things like complex cables or color work or brioche, but you still love making things and playing with yarn, this could be amazing for you. It could allow you to squeeze in some making time into a very short amount of time and still feel productive and feel fulfilled because you actually made something. So that is the first reason why I think this is life changing. The second thing is it has been mentioned to me more than one time that knitting machines take away the joy of knitting by hand. And I can understand and I see where that sentiment is coming from. But if you consider somebody who can no longer knit because of either carpal tunnel or arthritis or some other reason, this could be a solution. So just as an example, the woman that I bought my first flatbed knitting machine from, she sold it to me because her eyesight was so bad that she couldn't see the small stitches anymore. A plastic knitting machine like this could be not only easier on your hands, but the needles are also significantly larger and easier to see. So all of this could allow a knitter to continue to be able to make knitted things and to experience the joy of making. It's for this reason that I think a knitting machine like this makes knitting accessible to everyone, no matter what your situation is. And that could be all the difference in someone's life. Now, I think that this final thing might be a little bit more philosophical, but for me as the mom of kids who are right now six and nine years old, I feel like this thing will plant a seed. For myself, I started hand knitting when I was nine years old. I started weaving when I was a kid. Um, I started weaving because my parents got me a Fisher-Price weaving loom. It's a plastic loom, it's a plastic toy. Um, right now, Marina, uh, a knitter in our local community here, she gave my daughter Nina a knitting machine that is a plastic toy flatbed knitting machine. It's amazing. It works exactly like a flatbed knitting machine. And Nina loves it. And it, when her friends come over for playdates or whatever, she says, I want to show you my knitting machine. I don't know if my kids will actually become knitters or makers when they grow up, but they have exposure to this idea of making things and that it's possible to make things that wouldn't otherwise exist. So if you have kids or if you're around kids or if you have grandkids, this plastic knitting machine is easy to learn, it's easy to use, it's not so precious and you can use it with kids. If a 32 needle plastic knitting machine that looks like a mushroom house plants a seed in the mind of a kid's imagination and that kid grows up to having some sort of concept of how, how fabric is made, that could help with creativity, it could help with engineering, it could help with so many different things. This idea that you could make something from nothing. I feel like it's this idea that is life changing. That this thing can plant the seed in a future generation of makers. So that is it for today. A little bit of an introduction to this super accessible plastic knitting machine and a little bit of commentary from me about the life-changing magic of making things. If you like this video, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more videos about knitting, machine knitting, yarn, and the fiber arts, please hit subscribe. We are here every week to talk about color and craft. Now, please let me know in the comments if you use a Centro knitting machine and what your experience has been like. And let me know if there are specific tutorial videos that you would like me to make about using this knitting machine. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.